represents everything that all Americans want to stand for. He was a winner. He was a leader of men. An officer and a gentleman. Man of honor. Everything I ever wanted to be. Ultimate player, the ultimate person. God, country, flag wrapped into one. True American hero. Number 12 is the quarterback, Roger Stauber. He is Captain America. You gonna be a football player when you go be the finest quarterback produced in the last 10 years. He used to be like, that's all I need. Fortunately for me, I didn't lose my life. I didn't lose my job. Football convinced me that life is a team game. The rest of your life, nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it. Feels a lot bigger now than it used to be, you know? Thanksgiving is a, is a special day for him, as it is for all of us. It's an opportunity to be with your family, but it's a special day for him because he gets to play quarterback again. Try that again, Jeff. Set, hut. Roger goes out there at 72 and runs the offense and manages his people and, and wins. See what Staubach has up his sleeve. Roger Staubach has always been a star. The man whose very name evokes the heavens wore the star as the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys in the 1970s. It's the most highly visible position in all of sports. It's like being the center fielder for the New York Yankees. Roger is the reason that it is that way. All of us quarterbacks who've come in since Roger, we've been playing catch up, trying to live up to an image and to a position that he helped create. He's led a hero's life, a remarkable journey filled with twists and turns that almost didn't happen because of a simple eye test. We were taking our physicals for the Naval Academy. It's the dot test. It was the red over green, green over white. You know, I missed a few, and the guy that was doing the test wasn't paying that much of attention. And so he passed me. The only time I've ever passed a color test. I mean, if I hadn't passed the test, I don't think I would have got in the Naval Academy, and my life would have changed dramatically. Eventually, the colorblind kid from Cincinnati arrived in Annapolis. And in 1962, with President Kennedy watching, he delivered an eye-popping performance in the Army-Navy game. Phenomenon of the day is Roger Stombach. Just watch this game of hare and hounds. Stombach twists and turns, faints and fakes to avoid Army tacklers. He hadn't started until maybe halfway through the year. So this was the, really the first big national audience. He was just awesome that day. Just clearly put the team on its back. Roger Stombach puts on a great one-man show. Watch him go. Stombach stardom gave Navy head coach Wayne Harden and PR man Bud Tallman, an idea for the following season to wage what many consider to be the first Heisman Trophy campaign. I knew after that game that we had something pretty special, and, and Wayne, Wayne wanted to be sure that Roger got the attention that he deserved. And so I would collect quotes from the previous game, newspapers, opposing coaches, and I would circulate those quotes, this one-page sheet called Everything's Coming Up Roger. Tallman's goal was to make the country aware of Staubach's greatness. Back in Annapolis, the young son of a Navy assistant coach already knew how special Staubach was. I did get to know him pretty well. Roger was kind of one of the first guy on the field, last one off type of guys, so sometimes, you know, I was the only one left to throw to, and he'd throw to me. Every time you saw him play, you think, well, Man, he'll never be able to do that again. That was an amazing play. And then the next week, you see one and shake your head and say, oh my God, that was, that, that was even more spectacular than the one he made last week. I was a center on offense. Roger's back there going like this. You see the guy, you block your guy. Then you see him coming over, you block this guy. And then you know, in this way, you're blocking this guy. <laughs> and and uh, so it was fun to be a lineman for Roger Staubach. A couple of those scrambles that he made, if you freeze-framed it, 
when three guys are right around him, you would just say, there's just no way he's going to get out of that. Ron Dubinacher brings the crowd to its feet. Probably the best coaching job I ever did was not coaching. I found out the best plays we had were not in the playbook. <laughs> On the football field, Staubach was a stallion that couldn't be caught. Off it, he was even harder to corral. Very rarely did I actually talk to the press. You know, I, I, I was uncomfortable with it all. I, I just wanted to get out there and, and play. We had a Heisman candidate that nobody could talk to. That was unbelievable. I mean, as you think back 50 years later, you say to yourself, how on earth did we pull that off? Somehow, they did. And in the fall of 63, Staubach graced the covers of Sports Illustrated and Time magazine. One thing, there's no face mask on this picture. In those days, we wanted people to be able to see their face, so we never put the face mask on. But he says, I look like a wimp. He still is angry about me about 50 years later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've had so many people. I mean, I have pictures, Navy pictures. That, you didn't have a face mask when you were playing? And I said, no, it was Bud Tallman. He wanted to take these pictures without a face mask. <laughs> Staubach was no longer just a face in the crowd. But even as his fame grew, he proudly displayed an unwavering commitment to his teammates. We had this little signal that, of waving to each other, just kind of going like that. If you saw somebody far away and he couldn't hear you, you'd just kind of go like, oh, yeah, yeah, waving to the guys. And he told us he was going to do that on the Ed Sullivan Show. So I'm going to go like this. And uh... <laughs> Navy quarterback star Roger Staubach from Cincinnati, Ohio, the greatest in Navy history, so let's have a wonderful ovation. Some people watching it might not have seen, but we were just all there going, he did it <laughs> on national TV. I never dreamed that anything like this would happen to me. The team went out and did their best for me to get that trophy. I can remember to this day, Roger saying, I wish I could cut this trophy up into 44 pieces and give one day a piece to each of you guys. And I just wish I could divide it up into 44 pieces and give each one one of those pieces. We had a reunion at the Air Force game, 50th year reunion. They're still asking where the Heisman piece is. We always kid him every time we get together. Hey, I've never got my piece of that trophy. <laughs> His teammates still recall what he said more than 50 years ago but perhaps the most unforgettable words spoken that night came from Roger's father. I remember, like it was yesterday, my dad was in the beginning of a health decline, so he didn't want to say anything at dinner, but they, they asked him to say something. He just said, hey, uh, God gave us uh, one child, and he gave us a good one. So that was, and he walked off, that was it. <laughs> Clearly, Roger Staubach had passed his father's eye test with flying colors. Coming up. It's not a good feeling at all, you know, you work all week and you put all that armor on on a Sunday afternoon and when you come back, you don't have to take a shower. I'll tell you, man, that's frustrating. 